Next, we're going to look at a way we can interpret derivatives using physics applications. So right here, our function s of t is going to give the position of an object at time t. It gives the position of an object. The velocity is given by, so v of t, we could use that notation for velocity, but the velocity is given by s prime of t, the first derivative of the position function. Now that's velocity at time t. I didn't write it. Well, velocity of the object at time t. I didn't write that for each of these. The acceleration of the object at time t is given by a of t. We're going to use that notation for the uh, acceleration. And it's given by the second derivative of the position function, or the derivative of velocity. The speed of the function at time t is given by the absolute value of velocity. And we can find that by taking the absolute value of the derivative. Now, the average velocity, so a to b is going to be a time interval on our x-axis. The average velocity on that time interval is going to be given by uh, s of b minus f, s, s of b minus s of a all over b minus a, which you can see as uh, the slope of a secant line. Um, now, all of these, these are just by definition. Let me include one uh, diagram to motivate this definition, um, in particular the velocity definition. So velocity, remember, is how um, position changes as time changes. And it could be positive or negative, because you could be, what, walking forward or walking backwards. But it's given by how position is changing as time is changing. And why does the derivative of our position function actually give us that? Well, let's see. Let's see what that looks like. So the position function is just a, a position function. It looks something like this. Let's say that's our position function. Well, what does the derivative look like? Well, remember how we found the derivative. Maybe I should draw the position function a little differently. Uh, how do I want to draw it? It will probably look better if I make it like that, but upside down. So let's say this is our position function, whatever. Uh, that function is. S of t is our position function. What would velocity look like? Well, velocity, remember how the derivative is defined. We'll use the uh, fraction notation. Uh, actually, I don't even need all this. Let's just draw a triangle. And what is this axis? The x-axis is measuring time. The uh, y-axis is measuring position. The velocity is given by a change in position over a change in time. Well, what does the slope of the secant line give us? Well, that's some change in time. This length, it's a length on the x-axis, so it's a change in time. Right here, we have a change in position. And the derivative, of course, is what happens when you let this change in time go to zero. So the slope of that line is given by a change in position divided by a change in time. And uh, in the limit, as the change in time goes to zero, that gives you the derivative. And in particular, that shows that the velocity is the, the uh, units on the velocity are a position unit over a time unit. And similarly uh, for the others. But let's uh, look at a couple examples. Example. Uh, the position of a particle is given by this function. Uh, I have two written in front of me. Do I want the trig one or the other one? Uh, Let's do the trig one, why not? The position of a particle is given by this function. And the question will be, when is the particle at rest? So we want to know when the particle is no longer moving. Well, with our position function and those definitions, the particle will not be moving when the position is not changing. 
you're not moving if your position is not changing. In particular, that will occur where the velocity is zero because the velocity is telling you what? The change in position divided by a change in time. So when is the particle at rest? Well, when velocity equals zero. Let's, um, I, I should add to this, which I, I do have written down. I didn't write it down on the board. Um, let's restrict our times to being just between zero and two pi so that we don't have infinitely many answers. So let's just, just restrict ourselves to one, what, rotation around the circle, a revolution. Um, so when is the particle at rest? When the function, or when the uh, particle is, when the particle's position is not changing, which occurs where the velocity is zero. So all you have to do is find the velocity function and set it equal to zero. So let's do that over here. Velocity, remember, is derivative of position. We have two sine t minus t. Derivative of sine is cosine. So derivative of two sine of t is two cosine of t. Derivative of negative one t is negative one. And we want to find where this equals zero. So let's set it equal to zero. When does it equal zero? Well, add one. Two cosine t equals one, divide by two. So add one, divide by two. When cosine of t is positive one half. Well, where is cosine of t positive one half? Well, uh, I guess I'll do that over here. I'll do the side work over here. I'll write the actual answer uh, over here. Um, so I'll say t equals something. Let's do the side work. Well, where is cosine of t one half? To do that, I use two things. I use this. So we know our answers are going to be in quadrants one and four. And then I use triangles. Which one has a half? Well, the one to root three to two with what, pi over six, pi over three and the right angle. Cosine is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse is where, uh, is that angle pi over three. So we have pi over three, which is in the first quadrant. And then we need the fourth quadrant angle. The fourth quadrant angle would be what? Well, it would be pi over 3 like that, which would be negative pi over 3. But we want our answers between 0 and 2 pi. So we need negative pi over 3 plus uh, 1 revolution around the circle. Negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi. Well, that's what? Negative pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3. 6 and negative 1 make 5. So right here, the uh, particle is at rest at times pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, given that domain restriction. And let's do one more example with a, a couple parts. Um, example, a ball is dropped from a height of 64 feet. Its height above ground is given by this function. S of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 64. So I won't ask you to come up with that function um, based on when it, where it was dropped with what acceleration information. Um, so a ball is dropped from 64 feet, its height above ground is given by that on its appropriate domain. And we have three questions. One, when does the ball, let's put these questions on the next board. I won't, I won't fit them all here. Question one, when does the ball hit the ground. Okay, question two. What is 
the velocity when the ball hits the ground. And part three, what is the average velocity during this fall? So while the ball is falling during that time interval, um, from where it's being held to when it hits the ground, what is the average velocity? So let's answer part one first. When does the ball hit the ground? Well, when does the ball hit the ground? This function tells us the height above ground. So this ball will hit the ground when it is zero feet above the ground. In other words, so I'll say A, set S of t equal to zero. Set S of t equal to zero. Well, let's do that. Negative 16t squared plus 64 equals zero. Uh, add 64, well, uh, subtract 64, divide by negative 16. 64 goes into 16 four times. So you get t squared equals 4. So t equals positive or negative 2. But um, t equals negative 2 occurs mathematically. It doesn't occur uh, realistically, given this example. So we'll take only the positive time. So after two seconds, uh, I didn't give units. Let's say they're seconds. Yeah, OK, I didn't give units. Uh, yeah, seconds. So let's assume it's seconds. So after two seconds, the ball hits the ground. OK, great. So now I'm going to erase this and do part B. Part B. What is the velocity when the ball hits the ground? What is the velocity when the ball hits the ground? Well, when does it hit the ground? It hits the ground after two seconds. So what we want is the velocity after two sec or at two seconds. So I'll say we want v at two. Well, if we want the velocity after two seconds, we need the velocity function. So let's find the velocity function. Velocity function is given by the derivative of our position function. Derivative of t squared with respect to t is 2t. Two, 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. So we have negative 32t, derivative of 64 is 0. So here's our velocity function. Velocity at 2 equals negative 32 times 2, which is another way of saying negative 64. Okay. What does part C say? Part C, what is the average velocity during this fall? Well, what time interval does the fall occur? On what time interval does the fall occur? The ball is being held up here, and then it's being dropped. It's dropped after zero seconds. After two seconds, it hits the ground. So we want average velocity on the interval 0 to 2. The fall occurs during second, between seconds 0 and 2. So how do we find that? Well, VAV is S at 2 minus S at 0 all over 2 minus 0. What's s at 2? Well, we already did that work, actually. s at 2 was 0. I um, guess I'll write the work down here. s of 2 is negative 16 times 2 squared plus 64. 2 squared is 4. Negative 16 times 4 is 64. 64 or sorry, negative 16 times 4 is negative 64, negative 64 plus 64 is 0. Minus s at 0, well s at 0, substitute 0, you get 0 plus 64. 
0 plus 64 is 64. So 0 uh, plus 64, or sorry, 0 minus 64 on top, and then 2 minus 0 is 2. I'll just leave it as 2 minus 0. Equals negative 64 over 2, which equals negative 32. And uh, I didn't write it down, the units are seconds. I did write the units of speed down. Um, so you could be asked questions like these. Um, definitely get used to um, seeing the words velocity, acceleration, speed, um, average velocity. Um, if I asked for speed, you'd just take the, uh, now let's put a part D, why not? Uh, what's the speed after one second? Let's do part D, since I didn't ask about speed. Uh, I didn't ask about acceleration either, but if I asked about acceleration, um, you just take the next derivative. So part D, what is the speed, let's do two parts. What are, what are the velocity and speed of the object at one second, at t equals one. So after one second, it's somewhere in the air, we want the velocity and the speed. Well, the velocity is given by the velocity at one. And remember, the velocity was just negative 32 times t. Velocity, remember, is negative 32t. So here we want that at one. And now the speed at one is given by, so I'll say speed, speed at one second um, is given by the absolute value of the velocity at one, which is the absolute value negative 32, which equals 32. And uh, I guess I should throw units on these, what, feet per second and feet per second. So the velocity here is negative after one second and the speed is positive. So um, Definitely get used to uh, the words velocity, acceleration. Here, what is the acceleration? Acceleration, let's just find it, is negative 32, because the derivative of this with respect to time is negative 32. It's just a constant times t. Um, but um, we will use these words several times throughout the semester. So um, uh, get used to the words and how they're, they're um, interpreted using derivatives, how they're defined using derivatives.